Welcome to College Briefing. The content of the briefing includes more than 1,600 Jewish Harvard alumni threaten to withdraw donations over anti-Semitism concerns. Britain is a nation of thinkers, with not enough doers. Lawyers, signs and money, college football has a B1G mess on its hands. Biden, she set to pledge ban on AI in drones, nuclear warhead control, sources say. Jim Biden's last name has helped open doors. It's also made him a Republican target. More than 1,600 Jewish Harvard alumni threatened to withdraw donations over anti-Semitism concerns. CNN. More than 1,600 Harvard alumni have threatened to withhold donations to the university until action is taken to address anti-Semitism on campus. Organizers of the Jewish Alumni Association are calling on Harvard to formally recognize the group as a special interest group and to adopt the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism. Philanthropy accounts for 45% of Harvard's $5.8 billion income and 36% of its $51 billion endowment. Britain is a nation of thinkers, with not enough doers. Financial Times. The UK is suffering from a shortage of doers in its economy, according to Tej Parikh, chief economist at the Institute of Directors. Parikh argues that Britain's industrial revolution was driven by three groups of people, inventors, those who could adapt existing technology, and implementers who could install and maintain new equipment. The UK has a specialism in industries such as research, finance, journalism and television, but is lacking in practical skills, particularly in sectors such as construction, engineering and medicine. Lawyers, signs and money, college football has a B1G mess on its hands. Washington Post. The Big Ten has banned Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh for the final three games of the regular season, claiming that he knew about a staffer's alleged prohibited in-person scouting and sign-stealing operation. The allegations have not been proven, and the staffer who was allegedly involved left evidence of wrongdoing around the country. The competitive advantage of stealing signs is not necessarily a crime, but the manner in which the staffer arranged the effort to decipher opponents' calls is considered reprehensible. Michigan has accused its anonymous accusers of hypocrisy, which is part of the team's defense. Big Ten Commissioner Tony Petiti delivered the decision based on the conference's sportsmanship policy, but it remains unclear whether the punishment was too harsh or too lenient. The Wolverines are preparing to take legal action to keep Harbaugh on the sideline and maintain their undefeated season and national title pursuit. Biden, she set to pledge ban on AI in drones, nuclear warhead control, sources say. South China Morning Post. U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping are expected to announce a ban on the use of artificial intelligence, AI, in autonomous weaponry and the control and deployment of nuclear warheads, according to sources. Both countries have expressed concerns about the unregulated use of AI in conflict. The U.S. introduced its political declaration on the responsible military use of artificial intelligence and autonomy in February, which has been backed by 36 countries. China has also made significant advances in AI and has been exploring ways to enhance autonomous weapons systems using the technology. Jim Biden's last name has helped open doors. It's also made him a Republican target. Associated Press. Healthcare startup AmeriCorps Health Services, which filed for bankruptcy in 2019 amid fraud investigations, turned to Joe Biden's brother, Jim Biden, for support. The company received no aid, however, and some hospitals closed. Republicans are using the company's collapse to look for evidence to impeach President Joe Biden. They have accused his brother of using their shared name to gain financial benefits and have also focused on payments made to him by the struggling AmeriCorps. Democrats have countered that these payments were only loans. AmeriCorps has alleged that Jim Biden failed to repay a $600,000 loan. The Republicans are investigating a number of transactions and relationships within the Biden family. They are particularly interested in payments made to Joe Biden by Chinese interests and payments made to Jim Biden by AmeriCorps. The president and his brother have a long history of closely intertwined lives. Jim has been involved in multiple business ventures, some of which failed, and has faced various legal and financial issues. The negative publicity does not seem to have affected their relationship. The president even asked Jim to help furnish the Oval Office. Concerns about Jim Biden's business ventures and financial problems affecting Joe Biden's career go back many years. Jim Biden has faced lawsuits, unpaid debts and tax liens. He was also involved in a bribery scheme that was used against Joe Biden during his vice presidential campaign in 2008. Jim Biden's reputation has raised concerns that he is using his brother's name to gain financial benefits. The Republicans see the AmeriCorps collapse as evidence of this. 
Projects featuring Lady Bird Johnson's voice offer new looks at the late First Lady. Associated Press. The University of Texas has released a podcast about Lady Bird Johnson, who became the First Lady after the assassination of John F. Kennedy. The podcast is titled Lady Bird and was made by college student Jade Emerson. The podcast uses hours of recordings of Johnson talking about her life, from her childhood memories to giving advice to her husband in the White House. The podcast is one of many projects that have been released about Lady Bird Johnson, including a documentary on Hulu and an exhibit at the Presidential Library for her husband, Lyndon B. Johnson. Brandon Angel scores 18, Spencer Jones 15 as Stanford beats Sacramento State 91-73. Associated Press. Stanford defeated Sacramento State with a final score of 91-73. Brandon Angel led Stanford with 18 points, followed by Spencer Jones with 15 points. Maxime Reynaud contributed 14 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 blocks. Z. Hamoda scored 21 points for Sacramento State, while Brandon Betson added 17 points. Stanford shot 56% from the field and only committed 4 turnovers. Juju Watkins scores 18 points in her home debut to lead No. 21 USC over Florida Gulf Coast 67-51. Associated Press. No. 21 Southern California, USC, defeated Florida Gulf Coast 67-51 in a women's college basketball game on Friday night. Freshman Juju Watkins had 18 points and 7 rebounds in her home debut, following up her 32-point performance in her college debut against No. 7 Ohio State. Raya Marshall also contributed 18 points for USC. The Trojans trailed 9-0 at the start of the game but responded with a 14-2 run to take the lead for good. USC outscored Florida Gulf Coast 19-8 in the second quarter to lead 33-19 at halftime. Maddie Antonucci led Florida Gulf Coast with 19 points. USC closed the game strong with a 23-8 run in the third quarter. Utah Washington Football Predictions, Picks, Odds, How to Watch Pac-12 Matchup in Seattle. Yahoo! Washington is set to face off against Utah this weekend in a Pac-12 clash that could have playoff implications. Washington's offense has been dominant this season, with quarterback Michael Penix Jr. leading the Heisman Trophy odds. The Huskies are averaging over 40 points per game and have won all nine of their games so far. However, last week's win over USC saw the team's rushing attack take center stage, with running back Dylan Johnson setting career highs with 256 yards and four touchdowns. Utah is coming off a blowout win against Arizona State and will be looking to hand Washington its first loss of the season. However, the Huskies have historically had the upper hand in this series, with a 12-2 record against the Utes. The game is set to take place at Husky Stadium in Seattle and will be broadcast on Fox. Police, downtown skateboard park stabbing leaves two critically injured. Yahoo! Three people were stabbed, two critically, in an incident at D. Vargas Park in Santa Fe. The stabbing occurred in the skateboard park area, and police are currently investigating the incident and have not yet identified a suspect. The victims were taken to a local hospital for treatment, with one in stable condition and the other two in critical condition. Police are asking anyone with information on the incident to come forward. Braden Huff scores 19 in college debut as No. 11 Gonzaga pulls away for 86-71 win over Yale. Associated Press. No. 11 Gonzaga defeated Yale 86-71 in their season opener, thanks to a strong performance from freshman Braden Huff. Huff scored 19 points off the bench and grabbed 9 rebounds in his collegiate debut. Ryan Nembard also had a solid debut for Gonzaga, contributing 16 points and 7 assists. John Palakitas led Yale with 18 points. Gonzaga's next game is against NAIA school Eastern Oregon, while Yale will face Loyola Marymount. Colorado gets even, beating Grambling 95-63 after last year's defeat. Associated Press. Colorado defeated Grambling 95-63 in a revenge match, avenging their loss to the Tigers last year. Tristan Da Silva and John Hadley led the Buffaloes with 21 and 17 points respectively. Colorado led the game from start to finish, building a 22-7 lead early on and entering halftime with a 50-20 advantage. Julian Hammond III contributed 17 points off the bench. Grambling's Tramichael Moton scored 26 points in the losing effort. Ole Miss newcomer Flanagan scores 29 points to lead Rebels past Eastern Washington 75-64. Associated Press. Mississippi defeated Eastern Washington 75-64 in a college basketball game on Friday night. Alan Flanagan scored a career-high 29 points for Ole Miss, while Cedric Coward led Eastern Washington with 16 points.
The Rebels pulled away in the second half and led by at least 10 points over the final seven minutes. Ole Miss had only eight turnovers, while Eastern Washington committed 17. The Eagles outrebounded the Rebels 38-29. Kashad Johnson leads No. 12 Arizona over No. 2 Duke 78-73. Yahoo! The No. 12-ranked Arizona Wildcats defeated the No. 2-ranked Duke Blue Devils 78-73 in a college basketball game on November 10, 2023. Arizona's Kashad Johnson led the team with 14 points and made a crucial shot and free throw in the final minute to give them the lead for good. Despite a late rally by Duke, Arizona held on for the win. Caleb Love, who previously beat Duke twice while at the University of North Carolina, finished with 11 points and made four key free throws in the final seconds. The victory marked Arizona's first road win over a top two opponent since 2001. Coach Jim Harbaugh banned from three games over sign stealing allegations. Michigan asks judge for stay. The Toronto Star. The Big Ten Conference has prevented Jim Harbaugh from coaching the University of Michigan's three remaining regular season games. The school has taken the conference to court, asking for a temporary restraining order that would allow Harbaugh to coach the Wolverines in their biggest game of the season. The discipline was announced less than 24 hours before kickoff at No. 9 Penn State. The Big Ten accused Michigan of an impermissible, in-person scouting operation over multiple years that resulted in an unfair competitive advantage that compromised the integrity of competition. The Big Ten added that Michigan must play without Harbaugh against Penn State, Maryland, and Ohio State. If Michigan wins out, Harbaugh will be permitted to coach the Big Ten title game. Michigan denied the allegations and accused the Big Ten of trying to thwart its plan to seek immediate help from a judge. The NCAA is also looking into the claims. Ladies and gentlemen, it's me, the one and only Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Six Degrees world. Today, we have quite an eclectic mix of news stories for you, so buckle up and get ready for a wild ride. First up, we have over 1,600 Jewish Harvard alumni threatening to withhold donations until the university addresses anti-Semitism on campus. Now, that's a serious matter. Philanthropy is a significant source of income for Harvard, so they better pay attention. It seems like Harvard might need to take some action if they don't want to lose a significant chunk of their funding. Moving on, it seems like Britain is suffering from a shortage of doers. According to an economist, the UK needs more practical skills to complement its specialization in research, finance, journalism, and television. So, if you're a Brit with practical skills, it might be time to shine. In the world of college football, the Big Ten has banned Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh for the final three games of the regular season due to sign-stealing allegations. Now, I'm no legal expert, but it seems like Michigan is not too happy about this decision. They're even preparing to take legal action to keep Harbaugh on the sideline. Will they succeed? Only time will tell. Now, let's talk about a ban on artificial intelligence, AI, in drones and nuclear warhead control. US President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping are expected to make this announcement. Both countries have expressed concerns about the unregulated use of AI in conflict. Let's hope this ban helps prevent any AI-induced chaos in the future. On the topic of the Biden family, it seems like Joe Biden's brother, Jim, is facing some heat. Republicans are accusing him of using his last name to gain financial benefits, particularly in relation to the collapse of healthcare startup AmeriCorps Health Services. Now, let's hope this doesn't lead to any family drama during Thanksgiving dinner. In other news, the University of Texas has released a podcast about former First Lady Lady Bird Johnson. It seems like Lady Bird is getting a lot of attention lately with documentary releases and exhibits. I guess it's never too late to become a pop culture icon. In the world of sports, we have college basketball games and a Pac-12 matchup between Washington and Utah. These games are heating up, and the stakes are high. Will Washington maintain their undefeated record, or will Utah give them their first loss of the season? Only time will tell. Lastly, we have a stabbing incident in Santa Fe that left two people critically injured. The police are investigating, but we don't have any suspect information yet. Let's hope the victims recover quickly and justice is served. Well, folks, that's all for today's news roundup. Remember, the world is a wild place, and you never know what's going to happen next. So stay tuned, stay curious, and keep those questions coming. What are your thoughts on today's stories? I'm all ears. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. 
Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.